Have you ever wondered who ruled the heart of Europe before the mighty Carolingians or the renowned Charlemagne? Well, let's venture into the pages of history and peel back the layers of time to reveal the Merovingian dynasty. Emerging in the 5th century, this dynasty was a beacon of power and influence, painting a vivid picture across the canvas of Western Europe. They reigned over what is now France, Germany, and parts of Switzerland, leaving an indelible imprint on the course of European history. Their reign was characterized by a unique blend of Roman and Germanic traditions, creating a cultural mosaic that would shape the Middle Ages. The Merovingians were far more than just a footnote in history. They were the architects of an era, crafting a legacy that would echo through the centuries. So let us embark on this journey back in time to discover the enigmatic Merovingian dynasty. Our tale begins with a semi-legendary figure named Merovech. While his existence is debated among scholars, the lore surrounding him is nothing short of fascinating. Picture this. Merovech, the son of two worlds, born of a union between a Frankish king and a sea monster. His life, a tapestry of tales spun between the threads of myth and reality, laid the foundation of a dynasty that would shape the contours of Europe. Merovech's story merges the realms of the earthly and the mythical. His legendary courage and leadership in the Battle of the Unfading against Attila the Hun earned him respect and recognition. He became a beacon of hope, a symbol of resilience for the Frankish tribes. His name, echoing through the ages, became a title for the lineage he founded, the Merovingians. The Merovingian dynasty, named after Merovech, started its journey in the 5th century. It was a time of turmoil and transformation, a time when the Roman Empire was crumbling and the barbarian kingdoms were on the rise. The Franks, a confederation of Germanic tribes, were one of these emerging powers. They were scattered, divided, and in desperate need of unity. Enter Childeric I, the son of Merovech. He seized the moment, rallying the Frankish tribes under his banner. With a combination of strategic alliances, military victories, and sheer charisma, he managed to forge a unified Frankish kingdom. But it was his son Clovis I who truly transformed this fledgling kingdom into a formidable empire. But alas, that's a story for another scene. And thus, from the seeds sown by Merovech, sprouted the mighty Merovingian dynasty, a dynasty that wasn't just a line of kings, but the embodiment of a people's identity, their struggles and their triumphs. A dynasty that, in its rise and fall, would leave a lasting imprint on the sands of time. The true rise of the Merovingians happened under a young, ambitious king, Clovis I. In the late 5th century, a leader emerged from the Frankish tribes who would change the course of history. His name was Clovis, and he was only 15 when he inherited the throne from his father, Childeric Thust. But don't let his age fool you. Clovis was anything but a naive young king. He was ambitious, ruthless, and cunning, possessing all the qualities needed to seize power and unify the Frankish tribes. Clovis began his reign with the consolidation of his power. He didn't waste time, quickly subduing the neighboring Frankish tribes through a combination of strategic alliances, military conquests, and when necessary, brute force. His most significant achievement was the defeat of Syagrius, the last Roman ruler in Gaul, a victory that extended the Frankish kingdom's borders and marked the end of Roman rule in the region. But Clovis didn't stop there. His next target was the Visigoths, a tribe that held sway over much of southwestern Gaul, this campaign was not just about territorial expansion, it was also a religious crusade. You see, Clovis was a recent convert to Catholic Christianity, while the Visigoths were Arian Christians, a sect considered heretical by the Catholic Church. So when Clovis marched against the Visigoths in the Battle of Vuel, he did so with the Church's blessing. And as you might guess, he won. The victory over the Visigoths not only expanded the Frankish kingdom, but also established Clovis as the defender of Catholic Christianity, earning him the support of the church and the Roman populace. The unification of the Frankish tribes under Clovis was not just about military conquests. He also proved to be a shrewd politician. He adopted the Roman law and administrative systems, which made the transition smoother for the regions he conquered. He also cultivated a close relationship with the church, which bolstered his legitimacy and authority. Clovis's reign marked a turning point for the Merovingian dynasty. Under his rule, 
the Merovingians transformed from a collection of small, warring tribes into a powerful kingdom. His military campaigns expanded the Frankish territory, extending from the Rhine in the east to the Atlantic in the west, and from the English Channel in the north to Aquitaine in the south. But perhaps the most lasting legacy of Clovis's reign was the establishment of the Merovingian dynasty as a Christian kingdom. His conversion to Catholic Christianity and his efforts to spread the faith throughout his kingdom laid the foundations for the later Carolingian dynasty and ultimately the Holy Roman Empire. Clovis I thus cemented the Merovingians as a force to be reckoned with. His reign was characterized by military victories, political savvy, and a strong alliance with the church. These factors combined to create a powerful and enduring kingdom, setting the stage for the Merovingian dynasty's golden age. The Merovingian era saw a line of kings, each leaving their unique mark on history. Let's start our journey with Childeric I, the first historical figure in the Merovingian dynasty. Not much is known about this elusive monarch, but we do know that he was a warlord who gained power by aligning with the Romans. His reign marked the beginning of the Merovingian dynasty and set the stage for his son's spectacular reign. Childeric's son, Clovis I, is arguably the most famous Merovingian king. He unified the Frankish tribes under one ruler and established the Merovingian dynasty's dominance over Gaul. His conversion to Christianity played a significant role in spreading the faith across Western Europe. His reign was marked by military successes and religious reforms, shaping the course of European history. Following Clovis, we enter a period known as the Regency of the Queens. The next four rulers were too young to govern when they ascended the throne, so their mothers, the queens, took the reins. These queens, Clotilde, Ingund and Brunhilde, played a significant role in governing the kingdom and managing palace intrigues. Their influence underscores the critical role of women in the Merovingian era. Next, we meet Chilperic Vos, a ruler known for his love of learning and the arts. He even attempted to reform the Latin alphabet. However, his reign was fraught with conflict and he was assassinated, marking a violent end to his rule. His son Dagobert I is hailed as the last great Merovingian ruler. He brought stability and prosperity to the kingdom and was a patron of the arts and the church. However, his successors weren't quite as successful. The period following Dagobert's reign is often referred to as the Roi Fainéants, or Do-Nothing Kings. It's a cheeky term coined to describe a series of rulers who were less interested in governing and more interested in leisurely pursuits. Their lack of leadership allowed the kingdom's nobles, particularly the mayors of the palace, to gain significant political power. One of these do-nothing kings was Childeric III. He's known not for his achievements, but for being the last Merovingian king. His reign ended when Pepin the Short, the mayor of the palace, decided he'd make a better king. Pepin ousted Childeric, sent him to a monastery, and declared himself king, marking the end of the Merovingian dynasty and the beginning of the Carolingian era. Whether they were warrior kings like Clovis I, learned rulers like Chilperic I, or do-nothing kings like Childeric III, each Merovingian ruler contributed to shaping the kingdom's history. They navigated wars, religious changes and political intrigue, leaving a legacy that still resonates today. The Merovingian rulers, with their successes and failures, added vibrant colors to the canvas of European history. Beyond battles and politics, the Merovingians also left a distinct cultural and political imprint. Now let's delve into the Merovingian culture. Perhaps one of the most striking traditions of this dynasty was their long hair. Unlike the Romans who preferred short, neat hairstyles, the Merovingians, particularly the kings, wore their hair long. This wasn't just a fashion statement. It was a symbol of their royal status and divine right to rule. When a king was deposed, his hair was cut short, signifying his fall from grace. But the Merovingian influence wasn't limited to hairstyles. Their administration style was unique, to say the least. The Merovingian kings were not the sole rulers of their kingdom. They shared power with a group of officials known as the mayors of the palace. Now, you might be thinking, mayors of the palace sounds like a cushy job. But these weren't your typical city mayors. 
These officials held significant power, managing the royal household, supervising the administration, and even leading armies into battle. The role of the mayor of the palace evolved over time, gradually becoming more influential and powerful. The most famous of these mayors was probably Charles Martel, who was essentially the de facto ruler of the kingdom, despite not being a king. His son, Pepin the Short, would later seize the throne, marking the end of the Merovingian era and the beginning of the Carolingian dynasty. Yet even as the Merovingian dynasty faded into history, their influence remained. The long hair tradition continued among Frankish nobility, and the role of the mayor of the palace set a precedent for powerful advisers in later European courts. The Merovingian influence thus permeated beyond their reign, shaping the cultural and political landscape of Europe. All dynasties, no matter how powerful, eventually meet their end. The Merovingians were no exception. In the twilight years of the Merovingian rule, a new power was rising, the Carolingians. The seeds of this change were sown long before the final Merovingian king was shorn of his royal locks. The key players in this political shift were the mayors of the palace, a role that had evolved from simple administrators to the de facto rulers of the kingdom. The most influential among these mayors was Charles Martel, a man of strategic genius and indomitable will. Although a Merovingian in name, the kingdom was his indeed. His victories, especially the iconic Battle of Tours, where he halted the advance of the Umayyad Caliphate into Western Europe, solidified his power, laying the groundwork for his descendants to seize the throne. His son, Pepin the Short, was a shrewd politician, as well as a formidable warrior. Pepin saw the Merovingian kings for what they had become, mere figureheads, he questioned the logic of a powerless king and sought the approval of the Pope to rectify this anomaly. In a landmark decision, Pope Zachary supported Pepin's claim to the throne, citing the de facto power he already held. This papal blessing was a game-changer. It not only legitimized Pepin's rule, but also established a precedent for the divine right of kings, a concept that would shape European politics for centuries to come. With the Pope's approval in his pocket, Pepin staged a coup in 753, deposing the last Merovingian king, Childeric III. The long-haired king was sent to a monastery, his royal locks shorn, symbolizing the end of Merovingian rule. Pepin was anointed king, and the Carolingian era began. The rise of the Carolingians marked a new chapter in the history of the Franks. Under their rule, the kingdom would reach new heights of power and influence, culminating in the reign of Charlemagne, who would be crowned Emperor of the Romans. And so, the sun set on the Merovingian era, giving way to a new dawn under the Carolingians. The Merovingians, though replaced and often overlooked, left an indelible mark on European history. Their reign, stretching over two centuries, laid the foundations for European politics and culture. From the unification of the Frankish tribes by Clovis I to the long-haired kings and influential queens, the Merovingians shaped the course of history in the heart of Europe. Their legacy is not just in the historical records or the royal bloodline they established, but also in the institutions they built. The tradition of mayors of the palace, for instance, was a Merovingian innovation that played a pivotal role in the governance of the Frankish kingdom. And who can forget their unique long hair tradition, a symbol of royal authority that set them apart from their subjects and successors. So, next time you delve into the annals of European history, remember the Merovingians, the forgotten kings who once ruled the heart of Europe. Enjoyed this video about the Merovingian dynasty with us? Hit the like button, click subscribe for more history adventures, and leave your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Let's keep exploring the past together.